Hi, in this video, we'll add more information to an already existing product. In order to do this, we'll go into the products menu located in Catalogs, Products. Here, we see an overview of all products currently in our store. If it is a variant product, we see this button here. When clicking on it, an overview of all the variants for this product is shown. We'll add more information to the main product though, so let's select that one by simply clicking on its name. In the overview here, we got several tabs. By default, we're already in advanced mode. Turning it off will hide all but the most basic settings. We can also filter which settings are visible in the corresponding tab by clicking the options as shown here. We leave them all active though. This first tab covers the general information, which we already filled. This includes the product's name, manufacturer description, product number, prices, visibilities in the store, stock, values, categories, tags, media, and a few other things. The Specifications tab allows us to set up a product's measurements, which is useful later for shipping and calculation of shipping costs, as well as unit settings and properties. Let's leave the measurements alone and start with the selling and scale units. Here, we determine in what units we're actually selling. Let's say we sell units of 0.5 and liters. Next up, we got the packaging unit. We'll enter bottle. Right next to it, we got the plural for our packaging unit. In our example, this is bottles. The result of this is that when the customer selects one, it will say bottle, while if they pick more than one, Shopper will switch it to bottles. We can also enter a basic unit. This is used for the calculation of the base price in combination with the price we set in the general tab. As the tooltip here says, the calculation works like unit price equals product price multiplied with basic unit. And the result of that is divided by the selling unit. It's probably best to try it out for yourself and you'll see how this works. We'll set it to 0.5. Down below in the Properties section, we can determine which properties the main product has. In most cases, you can leave this blank, as the properties define the product's variance and as a result are set up there instead. Finally, we have essential characteristics. These are shown prominently during the checkout in the storefront as well as the cart. Here we can assign a template with the product's most crucial characteristics. The default template includes only a unit price. But you could set up something more extensive in the menu Settings, Essential Characteristics, like for example a product's EAN number or its measurements, to display those in the cart and checkout as well. Moving on to the next tab, Advanced Pricing. In this menu, we can define advanced prices based on rules. For example, we could pick the rule Customers from USA and set a different price. Further, we'd like to offer a discount starting at 5 units ordered. In order to do this, we'll say the first price we just configured is valid until 4 units. Once we do this, Shopware automatically adds another block in which we can configure the same values again. We're happy with the single volume discount, however. Let's just adjust the price now, say 3 euros. With the button down below, Add Pricing Rule, we could add even more rules to this. As you can probably see, we are able to set up rather complex prices here if we wanted to. The next tab is dedicated to variants. You will know this one from a previous video dedicated to this topic already, so I'll skip that one. The Layout tab lets us define what the product's detail page in the storefront actually looks like. By default, a pre-installed layout is selected already. You can assign layouts you created with this button or create an entirely new layout if you wish with this button. To create new layouts, you can use the menu Content, Shopping Experiences. There are a bunch of videos detailing this feature later, so we're skipping it for the time being. The next tab gets us into the sales settings. This is where we can find all the settings regarding search engine optimization. The settings here might be important to have your shop and products found when using a search engine like Google. You can set a meta title, meta description, SEO keywords, as well as a switch here to set whether or not you want every single variant to use a single canonical URL. All variants found in a search engine will then lead to that specific variant. The last section of this menu revolves around SEO URLs. 
First option enables us to define them in the context of our sales channels and allows us here to directly set a sale path to our product. If the product is present in multiple categories, let's say beer and beverages, the setting main category here lets us set the product's primary category. This is important for the display of the breadcrumb in your shop. After all, where is the product located if it is in several categories at the same time? Getting closer to the finish, the cross-selling options concern the setup of products we'd like to have associated with our current product. For example, we'd link accessories here or similar products. What this does is that it shows the products we set up in here in this product's detail page as related. For our beer, this might be something like a special glass to drink from. We can start by clicking the button Add New Cross-Selling. First, we should enter a name for it. This is the title for the section, for example, related products or similar products. We can activate or deactivate the cross-selling with this button here. The type lets us pick from a manual selection of products, which we set by hand, or a dynamic product group. This is a group of products which is dynamically generated based on predetermined factors. More on that in a later, dedicated video. For a dynamic product group, we could also select which group to use and how they are being sorted in the cross-selling, as well as how many of them we'd like to show our customers. After we're done, we could add more cross-sellings if we wanted to. Again with the button here, Add new cross-sellings. We'll delete it again with the drop-down menu here. The final tab I would like to show you is the Reviews tab. This menu shows all the reviews which customers left for our product. We can do a few things here. For example, we could delete the review or we can edit it. Among the things we can edit is first and foremost the language. We can determine what the language the review is in. This is important for translation functions. We could also hide the review if we wanted to. And last but not least, we have the ability to comment on a review. And this covers how to add more information to a product and concludes this video.